A COVID vaccine for kids as young as five could happen in weeks. It is the big talk this week surrounding the battle against the coronavirus. Pfizer and BioNTech revealed a lower dose COVID-19 vaccine that was found to be safe for children between 5 and 11. But the FDA must first authorize emergency use of the vaccine and then extend that age group to those younger than 12. And the CDC has yet to weigh in, which would be the next step before a real rollout can really begin. This morning, Dr. Frederick Bertley, who is president and CEO of COSI and a PhD in immunology, is here to talk with us about the kid vaccine, as we're gonna call it this morning, and all things COVID. Good morning, Dr. Bertley. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna get right to these questions, but good morning. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Angela. Hello, 10 TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this Pfizer vaccine for kids, it's a lower dosage, about a third. Talk to us about how that really compares to the doses for teens and adults. Yeah, so first of all, in medicine and therapeutics, that's typical, right? When your kiddo gets sick and you give him or her Tylenol, you don't give him the adult doses. This has been going on for hundreds of years. Kids are obviously smaller. Their metabolism is different. Their organs are smaller. So it's absolutely typical that vaccines vary based on age. And so when you're talking about 5 to 11 years old, having 10 micrograms instead of 30, which is what we have in the adults, one third is a normal thing. But it's important to understand they didn't just randomly pick that. They've tested that. Before Pfizer talked about what they did yesterday, they were testing at 10, 15, 20, 30 in a much, much tinier population just for safety. Are these safe in little kids from 5 to 11? They found out they were safe, and then they titrate, meaning they lower the doses or change the doses mm -hmm. to see what kind of immune response they can get. And yesterday, it just came out after over 2,000 kiddos from 5 to 11 tested, their immune reaction, meaning antibody production, was incredible with one-third of the adult doses. So it's normal. Yeah. It's typical. You're just experiencing it in real time. Great information there, Dr. B. Okay, so doctors have also said that large outdoor gatherings are really not the super spreader events that they thought. What's your take on right now with the indoor mask gatherings that we saw maybe in some concerts over the weekend yeah. with a lot of people not wearing masks? Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. Who is going to these concerts, correct? I mean, if they're indoor concerts and you're not um, socially distancing, you're not six feet apart and you're not wearing a mask, and you're infected, you're gonna spread it. It's a biological phenomenon. And now the thing is, are the people who are comfortable going to these mass gatherings, the same groups of people who are comfortable not getting vaccinated because they're not worried? Because they're gonna carry it more. Also, if you are vaccinated, you can still get infected by someone who has it there and you might be a spreader and not know it. So at the end of the day, just because we're all fed up of hanging out, being in closed quarters with massive amounts of people, just isn't the smartest thing to do today, especially with the Delta variant that's very contagious. And when that Delta variant came out, you explained how it's stickier than the original strain, like Velcro. I love uh -huh. that. And you said the, del the Delta was just a bigger piece. Now we're hearing about the Mu variant. How much Velcro are we talking about now? And what makes one variant yeah. stickier than the other? <laughs> That's a great question. And, and and to be clear, it's important to understand that we've already identified, we scientists have already identified over 45 hundred variants. Wow. Variants are new. We heard about South Africa, we heard about the UK, and now we're talking about Delta, and we're talking about the Delta because it's bad, and now they're talking about the mute. Mm -hmm. Variants happen because the virus replicates. And real quick, if you go through a course of coronavirus infection for two weeks, you will get two, about a hundred trillion viruses will go through your body in that two week time. So you're gonna get all these variants. And what's gonna happen is you get variants that are weak and go away, but every now and then, you're gonna get a bad variant that's stickier, that has more Velcro, if you wanna use that analogy, that can infect you faster and unfortunately make you sicker and ultimately make you die, which is why we need to get to herd immunity. If we don't, the virus will hang around, will replicate and will get a really nasty variant. Well, you know, Dr. B, I think you answered a lot of questions, even from some of our viewers about, you know, the, the kid vaccine, yes. is it safe for my kid? Why should I give it to my child? Um, so all really good information. We do wanna leave you with this. Every day you try to write a haiku mm -hmm. on Twitter, which um, the one you just had yesterday, I think is kind of spot on. If we can show that real quick, it really just kind of brings home what we're talking about here, where you wrote, folks, we are so close. Vaccines, slow variant growth. Keep pushing onward. Yes. What's your message there? Well, th thanks for saying that. First of all, folks, I am not a poet, but I just hopped on social media in February, and my goal is to write a haiku every single day. I've been doing that since February 27th, literally. Um, but the point is, no one likes this pandemic. No one likes being sick. We're so close. There's only one way out. 
people need to be protected. We need to minimize the virus's capacity to infect. And that's either you got infected or you got a vaccine and the vaccines are safe. We now know this. All right. Dr. Frederick Bertley, always a pleasure. So informative. You make it plain. We love to have your insight and your expertise. Thank you so much.